10 Godzilla ripoffs that are badass. There is no doubt about the fact that Godzilla remains to this day the unquestionable king of monsters. With its long-running popular franchise, we cannot ever forget all that Godzilla has offered us. But in case you were done with all the different parts, including last year's King of the Monsters, this list will serve you, surprise you, and perhaps settle you down for some time as well. Are you wondering what a Godzilla ripoff would have to offer you? If not anything else, some of these might freak you out. Of course, it is an endless wait when there is no new Godzilla film to look out for. But this list is prepared so that your waiting can be spiced up for the time being. We have looked back at the most talked about Godzilla flicks over the years, so you don't have to waste time searching for them. They are Godzilla wannabes for sure, but wait for the surprises they have to offer. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Guppa. When an earthquake rips apart an underground cavern, a baby reptile is found. Some foreigners don't pay heed to the locals' numerous warnings and take the hatchling with them to a zoo in Japan. Expectedly, this disappearance angers the parents' reptiles much, and they go on a rampage destroying the city to find their child Guppa. Of course, you cannot miss noticing how Guppa sounds more like a ridiculous slur than a terrifying monster. Well, that is what you get for this movie. Guppa deserves to be on this list because it is weirder than other usual Godzilla flicks. It gives you a lot of destruction and danger thanks to the angry mama and papa reptiles but the movie takes away everything that you would naturally expect thereafter. Mr. Funazu, the captivator of Gappa, is resolute on not giving it up as he continues to experiment and torment this baby monster. Watch this one unwind all that you thought of Godzilla. Daigoro. When Toho and Tsuburaya Productions collaborated to create Daigoro, they were held by the belief that Godzilla is for children. The decision to eliminate the elaborate allegorical storyline and instead infuse some slapstick comedy and wacky fight scenes to make it more child-friendly gave an impressive result at the box office. Following up on this, Daigoro was conceptualized, which surprisingly ended up making way for one of the strangest ripoffs ever made. As the cute name goes, Daigoro is first seen as a poor orphan and is later assigned a caretaker. The caretaker raises the monster to make sure that it follows the virtuous path ahead. When the city faces a dangerous crisis after being attacked by Goliath, Daigoro must rise to the occasion and protect the city where it grew up. The movie also offers a kaiju training montage as Daigoro readies himself to put up a good fight against Goliath. But this battle is unlike something that you would have imagined. With ample doses of comedy and ridiculousness, and along with uplifting musical numbers, this ripoff promises to give you a one-of-a-kind experience. In the ocean of ripoffs, this ripoff definitely needs to be acknowledged. What was it? Yongari. When Godzilla started making loads of money, this South Korean film production might have assumed that it wasn't, after all, a big deal. Because what would it take to make a film with a giant monster with all sorts of atrocity embedded into him? Only a monster suit and some experience at pyrotechnics? Well, they went ahead with this thought and came out with Yongai, Monster from the Deep and we're assuming this could have been the realization they were waiting for. The truth is, Godzilla was always more than just a video and a costume, and money. But meet Yongari, an enormous dinosaur-like creature with a single horn on the tip of its snout. Its shining yellow eyes and rows of scute on its back could hardly pull off the stunt it wanted to, but instead gave away for an odd watching experience. The plotline is about a legendary kaiju who has a chanceful awakening due to atomic bomb testing. But as you see this, notice if you can catch them stealing on Godzilla's original special effects.
The X from Outer Space Meet Girana, a monster from Mars who originally began life as a tiny spore and eventually reaches Earth on a Japanese spaceship full of scientists. Girana, the titular X, eventually grows into a giant lizard and a signature triangle-shaped head that resembles a UFO. And most importantly though, we don't know why, but this monster can even become a moving ball of hot fire. The story is a clear advance over the conventional ripoff standards and has a fitting science fiction plot that revolves around planetary exploration. But in the end, all you get is a lame climax just perfect enough for an equally lame character. However, the lame character is also a beast whose presence risks an invasion attack on Earth. This film was the first ever monster movie produced by Shochiku and was directed by Kazui Nihonmatsu. To this day, this film remains one of the more memorable horror flicks. I can't do this! I'm the king! Oh, you were the king! Hey! Uh, Yogi? Huh? Blackbird! Fire! <laughs> Galgameth after Godzilla became the sensation, the 90s witnessed an upsurge of kid-centered movies. Galgameth was just another attempt at luring kids to press their parents into buying them a movie as shoddy as this one. But the question remains, how do you make something like this particular ripoff? Make a list of things kids love. Mold all that mess into another ball of mess and there you go. But Galgameth did not want to remain the substandard wannabe flicks that keep coming to the market. The movie targeted the popular trope of giant monsters destroying things and placed it in a medieval context that enabled sword fights and jousts. The movie stars Devin Neal Oatway, Jonah Stewart, and Stephen Mocked, and the script was written by Sang Ok Shin. Galgameth was actually inspired by his 1985 Godzilla-based film Polgasari. With all that the movie delivers and broadly misses, one thing is certain, this one has to be one of the most original amongst the bunch of crazy ripoffs. Of course, by that, we also mean that this movie is equally crazy. Golgo. The tagline of this movie reads, Like nothing you've seen before, and we would like to reiterate it. Gorgo is an American initiative of ripping off Godzilla, and what a ripoff it is. Some movies hide their intentions, and some blatantly throw it on your face. Gorgo is a movie that distinctly belongs to the second category, wearing its bootleg crown proudly. After an inactive volcano erupts once again, Gorgo the monster awakens from his lengthened slumber. At first, he is captured by some brave hearts and sold to the circus to serve as a kind of showstopper. But this is not a peaceful movie at all. A second monster and a lot of destruction await you as you proceed with this blatant ripoff. But of course, the good points about this movie also need to be acknowledged. This one is not the worst Godzilla flick out there. Also, the special effects and cinematography deserve a fair mention and credit. The original setting of the film was supposed to be Japan, meaning to be a sort of homage to Godzilla, but the team finally settled with the UK. This one is a decent ripoff and deserves to be given a casual watch. Gamera. Finally, we come to a ripoff that is not an unfair or an unfortunate bargain. For what it is worth, Gamera is a memorable monster with all the right things infused within it. Massive and fiery in its looks, it resembles a turtle but can also soar up the sky and fly. But the best thing about the movie is that it has managed to make a name for itself simply by playing second fiddle to the original Godzilla. The franchise is today recognized as a ripoff, obviously, but more than that, as a ripoff that managed to find a voice of its own. More importantly, it suggests that all ripoffs are not necessarily a waste. When Gamera was introduced in the 1965 movie of the same name, it was depicted as a standard evil monster. But with gaining popularity among the children and in their publications, Gamera was transformed into a good guy, dubbing the titled Friend of the Children. Gamera is notable for the fact that it remained a hero figure throughout the film franchise. This is one ripoff that overcame its bootleggedness to stand on its own right. Pulgasari 
Want to go absolutely bonkers? Check out this recommendation. All the Godzilla ripoffs were willing creations of their respective directors, but ever knew of a movie that had to be directed as a result of abduction? Now you know. When South Korean dictator Shin sang ok was abducted under the eye of the dictator Kim Jong-il, they were forced to star and direct several pro-North Korean movies. This movie, as strange as it is, was the product of this abduction. The plot revolves around a feudal Korea and a peasant uprising against the corrupt king of the times before the movie U-turns and falls on the peasants themselves. When the king comes to know about the revolution, he has all the public utensils and tools stolen from them as to prepare weapons to defend the peasant army. Peasant makes a figurine monster that comes to life with the blood of his daughter. And there you have Paul Gasari, the monster and savior. But there are twists and turns in this absolutely weird ass ripoff. We take the liberty to say that this one is the weirdest of all. Reptilicus giant monsters roaming around the city on a destructive rampage. Can we ever get tired of this classical trope playing out in action? Reptilicus came out in 1961 and used this tried and tested formula to get into the game. The movie is set in Denmark, where the remains of a prehistoric reptile are discovered, and scientists soon manage to make it regrow itself into an entire reptile. But this is one of the silliest looking reptiles in the rip-off history, making the movie a rather shameful flick. This movie remains among Denmark's only monster films, and when you complete watching this, you will agree that perhaps it should stay this way. The only thing this kaiju does is roam around the beautiful city and plunders its buildings and other stuff while also making a complete fool of itself. You wouldn't understand why there is a need to make something like this unless you watch this for yourself. But of course, the kids love the movie. Varan, released in 1958, came out after the Japanese Toho Studios thoughtfully considered the kaiju subgenre's rising popularity. As the film fraternity geared up for more of such monsters and beasts, Toho came out with their first attempt at delivering a new giant monster. But in all seriousness, this Godzilla turned out to be a poor bargain. What we got was a giant triphibian that could walk, swim, and even soar through the air. It aimed at being all of Godzilla but unfortunately lack most of the Godzilla feels. The story symbolizes the consequence of nature's hubris on a power-hungry human species, and for this depiction, we give it a thumbs up. But you could also see the giant lizard monster's killer back spikes as it ultimately comes up against the country's military forces. When the ripoffs become too hard to refute, Toho Studios just agreed on Varin as a Godzilla character. This is the curious case of a ripoff stumbling backwards on the franchise that it wanted to rip off. Forget the movie and witness this historic event. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone.